You're going to love this. We're talking teas with Michael Harney from Harney and Sons. You are vice president. Now, every every Harney possible is involved in this company, right? Or mostly, right? Um, I was excited to meet you because this tea started in Salisbury, Connecticut. That's true. In in the basement of your dad's home, is that correct? Yeah. All right, so tell me about it. Well, he had the White Hart Inn up there in the northwest corner. I don't know if you've ever been up there. Absolutely. Channel 8 territory. Yes. And so uh, we um, had, uh, he had the inn, and there was this old uh, Englishman, Stanley Mason, who had three generations uh, in the tea business starting back in the 1860s now, in London. Now, did he just stay at the inn? That's how he, they met No, 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 no. But his grandfather had started the tea business back in London, and then Stanley got shipped over to the States in the 18, or 1930s, eventually got tired of working and retired up to Salisbury because Salisbury is so pretty. And so he was up there and he would come to the White Hart and talk to my father because it's the only place to eat. And then he said, John, you should carry my tea. That's my father's act, uh, imitation of his imitation. That so, was pretty good. The English yes. was pretty good. Well, it's, it's, it's imitation of imitation. <laughs> so uh, anyway... Uh, so did your dad love teas already? No, 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 no. Okay. Back in the 60s, very few people loved tea. It sort of had been driven into the ground. And uh, so Stanley got my father uh, started. You know, back then, that was right when the Apollo was happening. And sure. We had to have, we didn't want real orange juice. We, we wanted, wanted tang. We wanted tang. See, I'm old enough see, to remember see? that. See? Yeah. We you wanted stir it in a little glass. Stir it in. So, so tea comes back. Your dad starts messing around with right. tea. And he decides he loves it. Well, he decides it. it uh, yes, uh -huh. he is. His days at the White Hart were coming to an end. He had to come up with a plan B, and he decided that Harney and Sons was Plan B. And uh, he uh, was 50 years old. Not too many people strike out when they're 50 or so, and mm -hmm. no money. Uh, you know, it was in the uh, early 80s, and uh, things were a little tougher than they. Well, they're tough now, but they're a little tougher back then, maybe. And. Um, he started in the tea business, and my mother and him, and they just started doing what they could. And now you're a global organization. All seven continents. Which is, which you helped do, because you've been right. at it, what, 25, 30 years? Almost 30 years. Okay. Almost 30 years, but we're also in Antarctica. Really? Yes. Well, There's down I there would in the expect NASA. you would be with well. tea. So, take me through the types of teas. Sure. Well, we have, uh, these are just plain tea, straight teas, and we have the, uh, some white tea, a green tea, and a oolong, and a black tea. So when tea is growing, it's a green plant, which uh, you know, we're now filming in March, so there's not a lot of green trees out there, but eventually they become green. And uh, the plant pushes the energy up, sort of like the maple syrup, and that's what the tip is. So it gives all the goodness that's stored down below, and that's the baby of the plant, the white tea. That's just air-dried. Uh, but the teas are green, the leaves are green, and so they can fix it green, just like when you're cooking your asparagus in a, in a month or two. You'll fix it green by putting it in a fry pan or steaming it. So this gets fixed green, and that's green tea from Japan. And then you can semi-oxidize it. So like if you like your, um, if you cut an apple and it turns a little bit brown, that's oxidation. And if you let it just stop at brown, that would be an oolong. If you let it get black, you forget about it and it turns black, your kids put it underneath the, uh, underneath the uh, pillows or something like that, it would be black tea. Mm -hmm. So that's the range of teas from the tea plant. Of course, there's lots of other things drunk, but this tea plant. What's the best seller? Well, black tea has, uh, in the world, green tea because the Chinese and the Japanese have a huge population and they drink uh, green teas. So, and that's the one that's got the most studies done on it, too. So from the basement to a global business yes. on seven continents. Yes. You're a busy guy. Try to be. Right. So we're going to make a cup of tea. Yes. And this is hot cinnamon spice. And I tasted this right before Christmas time. And I have it in my drawer now. Really? This is a, this is a bestseller for you, It right? is, yes, number one by and far. And why is that? What have you put in this that, you, that has become addictive? <laughs> well, it's, it's great. I mean, it's, it's, it serves, uh, it, it has cinnamon and orange and cloves and on a nice black tea. So it's sweet, it's spicy, there's no sugar added, but it, uh, it tastes sweet. You know, cinnamon can taste sweet. I don't know if you ever eat cinnamon bark or ground cinnamon. It has a nice sweetness to it. Yes, people talk about me when I do that. Indeed. But um, why the metal containers? Why the metal? Because they're very pretty. Well, um, we just stumbled upon that back in, and in, in from Stanley, I imagine, you know, we had them because <laughs> We it buy, looks very buy loans and loans. And very, and, well, you know, we are trying to be very, very proper. Right, and these are the sachets that your French wife 
dubbed? She's the one that invented. No, yes. the word sachet actually is a little. <laughs> Means uh, it does mean something in France. She didn't dub it, but we she did. We did uh, uh, take her her term. It makes it sound a little more ritzy. So you're based in Millerton, Connecticut, uh, New York, which is right over the border. Right. We're still a Connecticut company, but we just moved over the border. So it's just like being in um, from here if you were just in uh, Rye or something like that. Right. From out of the basement. Indeed. Um, while you're making this, and sure. we've got some. Uh, interesting tea uh, pots here. Right. Well, when we make tea, of course, we want to uh, preheat the pot. Which we did do, I must tell you, we did that. Right, right, right. Oh, I'm going to preheat it quickly. And you sell all, all of the, uh, the the cups and stuff that oh. you have, right? Oh, yes. Lots of gifts. Yes, 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 yes. yes. Which is very there good. There you market. go. Got it. Um, so we're going to preheat the pot. We're going to put two sachets in there. Okay. And then I would have put one. See, I already would have made Well, I mean, you don't, you don't make mistakes. The customer's always right. Well, I love that. And then we're just going to wait a little bit. How uh, long do you steep it? Well, we're going to steep this for um, for uh, five minutes. Okay. Does it have to be? It should be five minutes. It should be what you want it to be. Okay. Um, my wife likes to steep things a little lighter than me. Okay. And she likes to use a little bit less tea than me. So, you know, we, my father and I uh, sort of have done strong teas, and then people can always make it weaker. It's harder to make it stronger, though. So, All right, so let's get to the teapots well, that you bought. I thought I'd bring down some teapots for you. And so uh, this is one uh, from uh, China. It's called a Yixing teapot. Let me just move that out of the sure. way here. So Yixing is uh, it's an area, it's a town, city, and they have this purple clay. And so it's, it feels lovely. Oh, yes, light. Yes, and uh, it's, it uh, allows you to... Um, uh, make multiple things. So you would put like an oolong in there and you'd make it multiple times. So, it's so that would be an individual? Thing. Well, actually, it's, uh, it could be for many people. So they would fill it up and they would pour it around I see. and they'd pour more water and pour it around. And these little cups, so it's almost like an espresso cup. Sure. And uh, you would drink it very concentrated and then they would repeat the process for, say, 14 times. Look what you've learned over 30 years. Uh, yes. How many country, what, what are your frequent flyer miles like? They do add up. They millions? Uh, they, well, not millions, but over a uh, fair amount, yes. Yes. Yeah, so well, and we're going off to China. I'm going off to China. We're going to go. Uh, the season's just starting up, so we're going to get it going over there very soon. And that'll be a lot of fun. Uh, I'm going to go to Taiwan, where they make great oolongs. What you've learned. Yes. All right, this looks like an anvil, but it's not. No. I went to, uh, just down in um, uh, Port Chester, is, uh, is a uh, ceramic uh, place. And we got to be friends with them and supported them on a couple things. So they had a, a teapot show um, and this was one which I had to buy because it's a teapot and how bizarre so okay this so you can you do open it. this yeah. up yeah and then you put the tea in there and you can see it's finished on the inside it's glazed right so it's glazed it's it's ceramic yes pottery yes that is very bizarre yes I would have never guessed that was a teapot well and then you can pour the tea out there very it, that's a collector's item indeed sure. and I'm not gonna collect it with anyone else <laughs> And this one over here? This is a Japanese one. So we have the Japanese teas here. Uh -huh. And so uh, this is an antique, which I haven't opened in a while, have I? Oh, it goes the other way. <laughs> I can see it. So the strainer's right there. There you go. So, there's, there's so the Japanese strainer. are very efficient. And rather than pour a pot straight forward like the rest of the world, uh -huh. they put the tea in there and then they turn it like this so it's more efficient. And again, just like with the Chinese, the idea is that you're pouring all the teapot, all the cups at the same time. So you have a gathering, and you'll do that. And so this is an older one, as you can see. Brass, maybe. Indeed. Now, you have lots of flavors here. Um, this is orange. Peco. This, yep. Yes, this is raspberry. Organic this is organic green. green. Yeah. So you went from six flavors back in the day to, what, 300 now? Something like that. I can't, it's above 10. Who names the teas? Because some of the other tins that you didn't bring, it's Paris, you know, it's, it's this one that's cinnamon, um, hot cinnamon spice. But who in the family is naming these teas? Well, we have, a, we have a corporation, we have a big corporation, and we have a board meeting, and we all sit around and fall asleep. No. What we <laughs> these do, are all family members. What we do is, there's things, like this one here, Orange Peco, is an old uh, name. Yeah. So when the uh, British first went to buy tea in, uh, in China, they didn't understand Chinese. They didn't have anyone teaching them Chinese. So they would just listen to the people and say, what'd they just say? And it turned out this word, Bai Hao, means uh, white hair is a sign of good tea. So his has white hair on it. That's better tea. This has a little bit of, of golden hair that way, and that's better tea. So when they say peco, by how they would 
sound like peco. So that's how the word peco. And orange is the house of orange, which is the royal family of, of uh, Netherlands, which also had a little stint in uh, England, you may know, uh, when they went over with after the uh, revolution. Now, you brought that up, and I want to ask you this. How uh -oh. is it historic royal palaces of England? You're, you're serving these where in England? Oh, uh, it's or served you in... you can purchase them as well there? Yes, well, it's at the Tower of London. Uh, he where says in... it's just in the Tower of London. <laughs> well, it's in many Kensington nice places. Kensington Palace, right? Kensington Palace. It's in, uh, it's in uh, Dorchester Hotel. It's in... Um, so you're taking over the world? Not really. But you know what we're doing this fall? We're going to have a tea trip to London, and we're bringing people along, and uh, we're going to go to all these, these famous places. So we're going to go to, say, the Chelsea Physic Garden, which was where Robert Fortune was in charge of back in the 1840s, and he was the one that brought tea from China to India. So how did a little company from Connecticut find its way into Kensington Palace? How did you do that? Well, it's, it's, it's a story. My father was uh, a gentleman that didn't like to say no. And, uh, John Harney. John Harney started the company, had the White Hart Inn up there in Salisbury, Connecticut. And so John, some guy called him up and said, how would you like to represent uh, the historic royal palaces? And of course, our family had, like many families, had come over from Ireland, and the queen, the queen, the king, the queen, I guess at the time, had shown us the way to the United States. So we thought it was, our, it would be fun to um, help keep the uh, help keep the queen uh, in her palaces. Has the queen had your tea? She doesn't speak to me. But do you know if she has? We don't know that fact. We don't know. Maybe we should find that out. Well, we would, but they do like to keep those things. She's a private person, and we appreciate right. that. So, again, with, with the tins and the, the palaces on this, the company is just globally exploding. It is. It is. Uh, it's in Japan. We're in China. Um, when I go over to China now, I do sales calls as well as uh, buy tea. So, um, and same thing in Japan and Korea. So we're good around. What makes your tea different from others, other teas? Well, my dad used to say that anybody could buy good tea but it turns out not too many people do. Mm -hmm. And uh, so we try to buy good tea. Another thing was, uh, he said always make tea an everyday luxury. So, you know, we followed what he said. And the other thing was the German guy, uh, I learned from a German tea master also. Uh, we went to Hamburg in Germany. And uh, we, um, he said, only buy tea that makes you smile. And I said, that's a good idea. And so I only buy tea that has a natural sweetness in it because the sun comes down and gives natural sweetness. We don't buy tea that makes you not smile. It's bitter. Yeah. All right, two things. You just partnered with the Culinary Institute of America. Yes. Tell me about what that means. Well, the CIA Culinary Institute uh, originally started in Hype. Actually, was from New Haven. You may or may not know that. Yes. All right. Was from New Haven. Moved Everything up to starts in New Haven. Er pizza, everything. <laughs> I know. Hamburgers. <laughs> Hamburgers. They didn't start in Hamburg. They started in... That's right. That's <laughs> right. right here. So this will mean what? Uh, well, it's several things. We've always we've been working with them. My dad actually had a partner that became a professor over there, and so we've had a somewhat of a relationship. But we've deepened it, and so now up in Hyde Park, up there on the Hudson, uh, we we work with them at uh, at a couple of different restaurants, and then out in California, they have this new thing, Copia. I don't know if you've heard about yes. that. Yes. But they took over, and they're making that into more of an education place. That's just um, it's in Napa, not Napa Valley, at the end of Napa Valley, in the city of Napa, and so we're doing some things with them. And so the Culinary Institute is, uh, is one that uh, we've always uh, uh, been friendly with. You know, my dad went to Cornell University, the hotel school there, uh, School of Hotel Administration, as did I and my sister and my brother-in-law. So we've all gone there. You have to do the Harney thing. Well, we, we thought we had to, but we weren't able to quite pass it to the, the next generation. What is going to be new with Harney and Sons? Uh, new, new tea flavors all of the time? New what? tea flavors all of the time. Yeah. Be We're always because doing... people get tired of the same thing? Is right, that right, to... right, right. And then, um, you know, we're doing lots of things. Um, we're, uh, we've got a, a project which I can't quite tell you about yet. Oh, but come another on, month Michael. In oh, another come month and another month. My brother, You'll call me first. I'll call you first. <laughs> um, well, I thank you so much. We have to taste this. Oh, and yes. I actually know that it's, that it's just awesome. Um, and as you continue on after 30 some years in the tea business, did you ever imagine it was going to be this big? Here it's mine. This is. Now, is there a proper way that I should hold? Well, mine? no, I'm just trying to make sure. It's all, there you go. We are all set. All right. There you go. 
Well, you know, there was this one thing, this uh, magazine I saw that had these, it was on the cover, they had this biker, a guy like looked like he was on a Harley on a biker, big guy. And he had his cup like this and his pinky out, because that's the proper way. Well, see? All right. There you go. He slurped. Did you hear that? Well, you're you have to. You're supposed to, right? You're well, slurping. Well, I'm an old wine guy, and you have to be able to. <laughs> you're trying to take a liquid and make it into a gas. Sure. Okay, so I'll, I'll do that. Yes. Um, uh, and one more question. With the shows Downton Abbey and PBS shows filming a lot in England, mm -hmm. has that helped the tea business? We hope so. And and we do hope you so. hope to? I know there are some tea, tea companies that have named some of their teas after Downton Abbey. Oh, yes, they have. Now they're going to make a movie out of Downton Abbey. Are, are you going to jump on that bandwagon? It's well, the bandwagon point. has been jumped on, so we can't. So they have the copyright. Yes, yes. So yes. you look for new bandwagons. We need to new, new ba That's right. We're always out there looking for new bandwagons. All right. I'm going to slurp. Excellent. It was pretty loud, but it's good. Michael Harney, thank you so much for You're coming welcome. on teaching us about tea. You're welcome. Cheers. Cheers. Spend all night kissing and a bump is right here, then who else is missing? Got a little sidetrack to find my solution. I find a piece of the door, but it's also a metaphor. Need to keep locked in the grocery store of a mind. Just to save time, skip right ahead to the nice ride.